All right, everybody. I'm here with Larry. Is it Casio? Is that right? Very good. Larry All Casio. right. Uh, it's not Cosio. It's not Casio. It's Casio. So uh, okay. that was the big thing that we wanted to solve today. And now that we got that done, uh, we can move forward. We're going to do a little webinar here um, and just pick Larry's brain and hear what he has to say about reducing employee risk. And uh, while we're doing that, I'll try to monitor um, the Facebook live feed. If you have any questions, we'll try to work those in as we do it. So um, to get started, I wanted to go ahead and give Larry an opportunity to uh, introduce um, himself and his experience in the event rental industry. Thanks, Tim. Appreciate you um, setting up this webinar. Hi, Zinga, we noticed you're looking. Um, we, do, we specialize in hard to place risks um, in all 50 states. Um, I, don't, um, I don't ensure anything that we haven't tried personally or own a business in. We had an indoor center, center with inflatables. Um, and we've been doing insurance for inflatables since probably 2000, 2001. Um, we do family fun centers, we do paintball, airsoft, special events, weddings, event planners, everything everything your mom told you not to do. We ensure those activities. Uh, we kind of specialize that in, in the years. We've got about 25 people employed here in the US and I think we have 12 in the Philippines that help us with the processing. Um, so we're, we're a real business, um, we take it serious. And we wanna make sure that we can educate. The majority of our time right now is uh, spent on education for insurance and for the well, party equipment rental world, the indoor inflatable center world. We spend a lot of time um, in those face group, Facebook groups and also doing trade show seminars. Okay. I was uh, unaware that you were actually kind of in the industry as well. I didn't know that. Are you still doing that or was that previous? No, that was a, a previous, uh, that was back in uh, God, 2006, 2007, I believe. Um, we took over a family fun center in Dallas, Texas that had gone bankrupt. We refabricated or remodified everything that was there that was out of date, made it look new again. And uh, somebody showed up and said, hey, I'd like to buy it. Wow, that's great. That's <laughs> So that's, kind of, that's kind of the dream, right? To, to build a successful business and then sell it eventually. <laughs> it was, the neat part was um, that I got to go from the remodel stage where, where we had to rebuild so many different things, purchase new go-karts, new bumper boats, new carpeting, new games, go through that whole process. The training of employees was priceless because we had to get them with experience, without experience, older ones, younger ones, work with schedules from school and from other jobs. So that, that gave me a, a huge insight. Great. Well, then you're the right person to be asking these questions, um, especially with your insurance experience. So um, let me start in here then. Uh, in your experience, Larry, what role does employee management play in reducing risk um, as far as your business is concerned? Ooh, employee management is probably the, the biggest weak link that uh, we have in the uh, party equipment rental world. Um, you normally see is uh, untrained workers um, that have maybe had 15 minutes of training by standing next to somebody and said, go do this, go grab that stake, get that hammer, let, 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 we got to go, we got 14 more stops to make. Um, so there's very little training. Um, and the biggest problem, it's not documented if there is training. They give them a generalized, okay, this is what you do, this is how we set it up. You took, take a look and see if there's any dog poop on the grass and then you know you throw the tarp down, let's go. So what, you know, how to roll, how to unroll, that's usually what you're seeing people get trained on. So I think that if, if management had a training program, a module where they could document the training and they can have dated and timed stamped signature, then there's proof that they were actually showed how to operate, how to set it up, how to operate it. Um, we don't see that very much. Um, it's something the industry needs and it would help on with us on the claim side, it gives us some ammunition to be able to argue the point that it was a trained operator, it was set up correctly, there were pictures taken, here's proof. 
Right, because, I mean, we were talking about this a little bit earlier. Like, if you walk into court with something that's not signed or um, just a story, uh, it's, it's pretty much worthless, uh, whether it happened or not, unless you have some sort of proof. The dollar amount goes up. The paid dollar amount goes up if, there's no, if it's not signed or no documentation. And that's that's kind of the, the biggest challenge we see. Um, we very rarely see employees get hurt. Usually it's a lifting injury. Um, workers' comp will come in and, and take care of that. Um, OSHA doesn't set any laws or guidelines, but the industry that sets up the guidelines says 50 pounds which doesn't work in the inflatable industry. The stakes are heavier than 50 pounds. Right, so. right. Everything um, heavy. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, the, the training would be important to the, how to back up a trailer, how to drive a truck with a trailer, turning with a trailer, how to lift correctly, how to have back support, how to have safety glasses um, when, they're, when they're on the job. These little things you, you're supposed to provide by law if you don't do it and they, they get injured, then you can be held to a higher standard, a higher payout. If you provide it and they don't use it, then carrier's still going to pay the claim. But you want to make sure that you, you do offer it and it can minimize the dollar amount get paid out. Yeah, now that's something that uh, we at Inflatable Office have tried to, to bring into our software to make it a little easier for people to do. One of the reasons was because I was an operator as well at one point and uh, I wanted to follow the rules. It was just difficult. So getting everyone to sign stuff uh, record everything, uh, go through this stuff, or even know what they're supposed to go through. Sometimes it was difficult. So I know one of the things that we did was we built into our system uh, a bunch of different methods. Uh, one of those is attachments, and uh, it you know it doesn't jump out at you at, at, at you as like a way to keep your employee risk down, uh, but there's a real good way to use it to do that. And what we would do is we would uh, have in our packing list the actual training documents um, and those would print out uh, for every event as they were loading up the vehicle to take it out. Uh, they would go through those inspection checklists, um, go through the training and sign off on it every time they did an event. And at the completion of that, they would take the pictures of those and send it into inflatable office and we would then link it with the event. So it was always there and always recorded. Uh, and we also filed those, but um, just having it right there at your fingertips and you, where you know it's done and it's done right uh, is really useful. Uh, I know one of the other things that we do right now is we have uh, some training stuff as well, uh, where you can actually set up uh, some training programs for your employees. And uh, if they're supposed to do an event, uh, and they're taking out some equipment that they're not trained on. They're going to get a reminder saying, you need to complete this training. And then we record when they do, and they have to get it 100% correct. So uh, one of the other things that you can do as, a, as an owner then is you can force them to refresh as well. Uh, so once they've completed it, if you want them to refresh, you can clear, uh, clear that out and have them refresh their, um, their training on that. So. Those are a couple things that we do um, with that. Are there any other um, risk factors or safety sort of needs that a, a rental owner should, should deal with when training their employees? The biggest thing probably would be that um, each unit is specific operation setup guidelines. So a, a bounce house is a bounce house, a combo is a combo. Those are very similar. A slide, an obstacle course, depending on the size of them, are going to bring different challenges. And there needs to be something for each unit that they're using. A Euro bungee is different, a rock wall is different. Um, I'm unfortunately am on the side of the claims. I get to be involved in the claims and read through the claims and help with the, the adjusters and the attorneys. Um, so I get to see a different side than what the, the business operator um, gets to be exposed to. So I see the ugly side and just a little bit of training, just a little bit of care goes miles to minimize claims. And it's something as small as the checklist, like what you mentioned. If they have a checklist before they leave the building that has, make sure that they have all the stakes, they have the hammer, they have the, the signed rental agreement or rental agreement to get signed, all that stuff with them, a checklist before they leave. Something as simple as that means they don't have to turn around and yeah. rush back to the shop 
and then go back out and try to make everything on time again. Or, so, you know, we've seen too, I'm sure, where, where people decide, well, I'm not going to turn around. I'm just going to do without and hope it goes okay. So, and that, that's not acceptable either. So. Well, we had one claim that um, uh, the, the rental client uh, had ordered a slide, water slide. And when they got there to d install it, they said, you know what? Don't give us no water. We can go down the slide. So th they didn't bring stakes to stake down the, the pool part because it normally has water and it's weighted down. Even though it has the rings, they mm -hmm. for some reason thought it was okay not to put them in. Well, they left, and they the the customer obviously with their with their pe people got drunk, and it flipped over backwards and launched the owner of that establishment over the top of the slide when it rolled backwards. So, I mean, just the, the checklists are so important, and as we know, checklists are are there to be used, and most people will check all the boxes. It's like when you go to the doctor. Mm -hmm. I want you to list anything you have wrong with you. Check, 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 check. You know, you don't even read it. You just check it. So it's very important that you at least have one for them to be able to use. And especially when you're picking up new people for an event, you see it advertised all the time where people are looking for help. They're coming from another company or they need an extra a couple hours worth of work. They need two or three more extra people. They don't have time to train those people. So an online training that you guys are talking about providing would be key in minimizing those exposures. Yeah, um, and, and in tandem with, with our training thing, we also have a safety certification uh, program that we launched a while back. And with that one, the kind of uniqueness of that is you can send that um, automatically to customers as well. So if you're doing a drop off of some units and you want them to know how to operate these units, you're gonna do the setup that you want them to be able to operate. Our system is smart enough to, to know, I just need to give them the operation safety information for these items that they're getting and then we record when they've you know completed that that uh, survey now in the case of um of an, i think of a customer i don't think we require that they get it all right uh we just review it with them after the after the test is over and if they want to retake it they can but they can see the ones they missed and what you know the right answers were um is there any other, have you noticed that companies that do the safety certification stuff with their employees, whether it be ours or I think you guys offer some stuff or, or uh, some of the other organizations out there, have you noticed that those places tend to have fewer claims or, or tend to, to work through the claims better? Well, the people that have the, the discounts, uh, Seattle would be the only one that, that I know of that's in the industry open for everybody. They, um, they'll have their people sign up that day, but with the employee turnover, they don't have the rest of them go. So we, when it comes through the claim process, we'll find out that, okay, maybe that person was hired. They did the testing February and this guy was hired in May. So he was never made to be tested. So it's something that if you can build into a program like yours where every new hire comes in, it has to get the testing and get approved through the state or the training, that would be key. It would really help the claims um, minimize because claims are up. Um, the, the growth in the industry has been huge. Um, there, there's more inflatables at more houses every weekend than what there was five, 10 years ago. So the underlying thing is lack of training. Yeah. And, you know, it's not something that people should need to be neglecting because, I mean, this is, um, this, you know, same with insurance. They, they need to be honest with their insurance companies. They need to spend the money on the insurance because this is something that protects their business, which is basically their livelihood and, and probably in many cases their, their future and their retirement. So this isn't something to, just to kind of sweep under the rug and hope for the best and, and just try to make, you know, an extra buck from, from the next client that comes through the door. Um, a lot I think of people, that, I think, are probably on the shoestring budget, st either starting out or trying to make it work as a secondary income. And um, so, some some of them might be starving, looking. <laughs> I need that 150 bucks to, to pay the gas and electric bill or whatever it is. So they will cut some corners, um, and that's always going to happen. But I think as an industry, we have to make sure that we're educating the people better. We're giving them the tools to become successful you and myself both depend on customers to pay the bills 
And if we don't help them out and educate them and teach them how to be better business people, then they're not going to be around. So we have a vested interest, you and I both do, to make sure that these people do it right, that that they follow the rules, that they 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 educate the people that they're dropping off these inflatables to, because it's their livelihood. One claim could wipe them out. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I wanted to ask, this might be a tough question for you uh, on the spot here, but were, were there, are there kind of like three major things that you would suggest to an operator to, to train their employees on kind of the three things that you might see happen the most? Top three, the checklist, review a checklist before they leave the building, make sure they have all the equipment, all the tools, and any contracts that they need to take to be delivered. That would probably be number one, uh, because that would keep a lot of people from rushing, having accidents. Um, making sure that they're taking pictures and reviewing in the instructions on every unit that they drop off. And some people say, well, even a cotton candy machine? Well, we have claims on cotton candy, you know? One was 150,000, one was 100,000, you know, they put their fingers in. We weren't told we couldn't put our fingers in, so. If it's not if it's not signed and dated, it didn't happen. So you can't go to court and say, "Well, I told them." You have to have the proof. And then probably number three would be um, taking pictures. You got to take pictures. Pictures are worth a thousand words. There's so many units that have been moved by the renter, yeah. or that they say uh, did damage because it was set too close to a house or or a stairwell or something. So the those top those would be my top three without uh, without giving you a long list. Okay, well, great. I know the, the taking pictures thing, um, it's, it's also good for your marketing later on when you, uh, you wanna put some new stuff up on your website or, or whatever, and we make it super easy for people. If you're using our workers module, all you do is snap a picture, you email it into inflatable office, or you text it into inflatable office uh, to attach at inflatableoffice.com, and uh, when you do that, we know where you're at because you're scheduled to work there. And so we just attach it to the event and, and you're good to go. It's super simple. I mean, uh, everybody's taking pictures and uploading them to Facebook and, and sending them to friends and stuff as well. This is no different. It's just that easy. Uh, and it, it just makes no sense not to do it. Um, and, you know, just from your experience, you know, it's, it's very helpful too, it sounds, uh, when you're working through claims. So the pictures, um, um, once again, some people take and post pictures of five and six people going up a slide at the same time. Our video showing three or four kids coming down face first down the slide. That's the worst thing that they could do for themselves or the industry because it'll come and bite them in the butt later on down. So, you know, if you're going to post pictures, a couple of things, you probably need to make sure in your rental agreement that there's a release for you using those pictures, especially if it's got kids in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Second, absolutely. Definitely want to make sure that that date and time stamp is priceless. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, what I trained my group to do is take pictures of your setup, you know, before anyone, anyone's on it. Uh, let me see the sign. Let me see the stake. It's easy to get a picture with that, all that stuff in, in one shot. And you get a reference point as to where the thing was located. So if it does get moved, you, you know, you have some proof that you, you did set it up properly and you did set it up in a different location than it was. So everybody has these. That's true. And it doesn't take, but you know, click, 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 set up before what the yard looks like before, what it looks like when you're done. And when you show back up, stand in the same place, take a picture. Um, you know, there's some pushback on it because we've mentioned it in some of the, the paperwork that we've issued or the, the postings that I've done. Um, because, you know, it's raining or they're so busy, they don't have time. I mean, if, if you set up two units, one unit, you're talking about an extra, what, 10 seconds? Yes, they're busy. We know that they're hustling and they're trying to make it. But it's just one more arrow in your quiver to help defend yourself in, in case anything comes back later on. Because the majority of the time what we hear is, they never told me. They never said that I couldn't put it there. They never asked me if there's a sprinkler system or yeah. there's a line or whatever it is. So it helps. Absolutely. Well, I don't see any um, 
any comments coming in uh, from the group yet here and um, I'll do a refresh here to see if we have any other comments or questions that, that people are asking but I do want to give you a chance to say um, just kind of tell us what the, the COSIO difference is and uh, you know what makes your insurance company uh, a great place to do business with if you're an operator. I think we bring something different because we're a full service insurance agency. We don't just do inflatable insurance. We do the commercial auto, the workers comp, we do the life insurance. So it's a, it's a, it's a full agency. It's not just somebody that's trying to specialize in, in one thing. Um, we've had people that had weddings that also have a rental company. We did the insurance for their wedding. Um, we have the knowledge and the program, the, the proprietary program that we developed has the best coverages, the least amount of exclusions than anyone else that's ever been in the industry. Because I took all of the best ones, put them together, and then added extra coverages that weren't there. So uh, the biggest thing that we hear is sticker shock, you know, well, I was with that other company and it was half. Well, a lot of it wasn't covered, the stuff that should have been covered. And, you know, we, we, do, we do ask for you to be, you know, truthful in your application and in your gross sales and your equipment. And, you know, we ask for serial numbers and description of what the units are because we use that information for underwriting and we also use that information on claims. Okay, great. Well, it, it sounds like, uh, it sounds like you guys, you know, have the experience and, and you have a lot of things um, handled that, that other companies might not. You're, you're covering things that, they might be excluding just to get a lower price. And I mean, we've seen a huge amount of turnover just in the insurance industry. And I think that's, that's kind of a testament to how you guys are running your business is that you are still here and have been for, for quite some time. 39 years. How many? 39. 39 years. Wow. You weren't even born. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know I got what? a couple of questions that, that came in here. Um, Go ahead. And it's, Let's see, it says if, are there any things that uh, should be covered uh, with concessions in the checklists and training that, that you would recommend? Supposedly in, in the real world, everything has a manual, operating manual. Even if it comes from China, even if you buy a blender, everything has an operating manual. So you should make sure that a copy of that manual, especially with something like a blender or you know, a, a snow cone machine or a cotton candy machine, anything has moving parts, you definitely want to make sure that they, they, they're handed one, emailed one, so the instructions are given. Because you, you think that, that, that it, it, it's a blender. What could you do with a blender? Not everybody was issued common sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we have uh, the ability to, if, if people are using inflatable office, um, you can actually include some of that information in your rental item uh, in a certain field and we will print it in the contract when that contract is generated. So you don't have to hand them the entire booklet um, because there's, you know, some things they don't need to know in there, but you can pick and choose out of there. Um, you know, what's clear that the manufacturer wants to, to warn people on and uh, those will go into the contract and you can make them initial that line as well if you want. Uh, or, you know, we can just go off of the fact that they did sign a contract with terms that included all those warnings and, and safety precautions. So I got another question here from Rita. Um, looks like that's unrelated to the insurance stuff, uh, but she's asking uh, with our, our new, um, I don't know if you know this, Larry, but we're launching a new brand called eventoffice.io. And, uh, we, uh, we're doing that just to kind of highlight the fact that we, we work really well for the event industry, not just the inflatable industry, but we can handle event industry as well. One of the things that we've noticed is that their inventories are quite larger uh, just because they have all the different types of forks and uh, linens and, and chair covers and everything else. So uh, with those plans, the, we do unlimited rental items. Um, if you compare your inflatable office plan to the, that, it'll probably be similarly priced. Um, the difference in pricing is basically we're charging for users uh, as opposed to rental items um, with that event office 
uh, .io uh, brand. So, and and it's also um, just showing that we're we're committing to to move more into that industry and to to solve some of the problems that uh, people are having there. Uh, I know there's a lot of stuff when you're doing big events that um, you have additional uh, planning and forms that you have to get people to fill out. Uh, so we're adding some of that information into our system, that, the ability to do some of that stuff. And the neat thing with that is that customization uh, is going to allow you to do some some more stuff with the, the safety and the training of your customers and employees as well. Um, because you know, really uh, what we're creating is um, the ability for you to customize some web pages and forms uh, and then collect more information and, and get more information out to your customers. So hope that answers your, your question, Rita. Um, I don't see anything that out, right now uh, that we need to cover. Um, I just want to thank you, Larry, for, for being a part of this webinar and, and giving us all this good information. Uh, hopefully our customers and anyone out there who's watching can use it to to be a better businessman and uh, just keep their patrons safe and, and keep themselves protected. So thanks for the us. opportunity to be part of it. And thanks for uh, working with us to uh, give your customers uh, discounts on their insurance and uh, discounts on your pro your program. So I uh, look forward to hearing more about the, the new program. Maybe we oh, can. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. In the new program. You brought up a good point and I, I don't want to, to miss that. If you are an inflatable office user, you can sign up for uh, CASIO or CIA insurance and um, you'll get a 10% discount on both products. Now, that's 10% off our normal price. If you're already getting a good discount from us, you may not see a, a discount from us, um, but you know you, you could still take advantage of the, the discount on the insurance. So, okay. Uh, also, IAPA's coming up. Larry's gonna be at IAPA. He is every year. He's, he's got a great booth. And they give away a lot of fun little things. Uh, We're right so across from your booth. Him. What's that? We're right across from your booth again. Oh, isn't that great? We're going to be neighbors again, too. Um, and we're going as well. And I don't know about Larry, but I know we have some extra tickets. Uh, and we'll be, once we get those from IAPA, we'll start to, to pass those out and have a few little contests. So make, make sure you like our pages on Facebook and stay in contact. All right? Likewise. They can like our pages, too. Appreciate it, Tim. All right, Larry. It was good talking to you. We'll catch you Thanks. later. Appreciate it, buddy. Bye-bye. Yeah.